Okay, here we go. Seven minutes of seed for moms. What is seed? It's the word of God and one of the most challenging of assignments here on earth, I believe, can be mothering. But when we mother with the word of God and led by the spirit of God, um, it's amazing because the word of God does the work and we grow up spiritually mature children long before they're mature in earthly years, right? It's powerful. It can be done. It can be enjoyable. And these seven minutes are usually how I utilize uh, the, this internet to get these things to you. <laughs> it's not like I'm so old. The internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So what I am trying to do is uh, tell you about some things in seven minutes or less. And I'm coming to you from rootbible.com. That's going off the Handle with Care series. All right, we just got done talking about sin. Sin! What is sin? What isn't sin? You see, there are things that we are calling sin that aren't today in, in the world. And the church has absorbed it. And one of those things is something called hate. How many of you have heard the word hate? hate, 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 I hate this, that's hate speech, they hate them, I hate him, and yet they'll say, oh, that's sinful, you shouldn't hate, right? Now, what's unique is the word of God is clear on the word hate, and there are things we are supposed to hate. Hate is not sin. When we are hating something that the Lord tells us to love, it's sin. When we are loving something the Lord tells us to hate, it's sin. But hate itself is not sin. And you can see the trickery and tactics of the evil one to want to convince us that hate itself is sin. Because then how would you hate sin? How would you hate the devil? You even see people today that have compassion towards the dominion of the evil one, which leads to sin. No. You hate what is evil and you cling to what is good. It's the very definition of love in the word of God, besides he being love. To love is to hate what is evil, to hate sin. Okay, so hate itself is not sin. And we have an opportunity to develop ourselves and our families around the idea of 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 this new life of dominion of life that if your children have received Christ Jesus and you want to make sure they have not all kids have if your kids are in your home and they've not yet received Christ they're still under the dominion of sin but unless you see them how God sees them what he's created them to be you'll never be able to walk them into the dominion of of life which is in Christ Jesus see when Jesus came and died for us he delivered us out of the the dominion of sin, destruction, and loss, and delivered us into the dominion of life. Like the Israelites, and you can tell this to your kids, like the Israelites, when they were delivered out of the dominion of Pharaoh in Egypt, they were delivered into life, life under love, life under God. And Moses brought what God said to them, and yet... There were many of them that wanted to choose to go back under the dominion of Pharaoh and be slaves again. Not slaves of love and life abundantly, but slaves of Pharaoh, right? Now, today we have a better covenant that he delivers us into, seated with Christ's covenant. Why would we then choose to go back under the dominion of sin and death if we've been completely delivered from it? It might be difficult. You might be navigating. You might be growing up in the things of God. Your children might be growing up in the things of God. But that doesn't mean you turn and go back to the dominion of sin. You see, he has given us his word that we might choose not to sin. We've been delivered out of the dominion of sin that we might no longer dwell in it. That means we have a choice. Our children have a choice to dwell there. But the way we don't make it our dwelling is by discovering what current dominion we are under, the relationship with God, getting the word into us, 
taking any thoughts that are of sinful nature and getting them in line with the word so that they don't lead to the dominion of sin. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. He was saying this to the church at Galatia. This was the church. And he's reminding them, you still have the ability to sin, but you don't have to. And a big, big tool, a big helper, the Bible calls him, that we've been given is the Holy Spirit so that we don't walk out the desires of the flesh. Does that mean you'll still have feelings and emotions? Yes. We talked about this on the last seven minutes. Feelings and emotions signal us it's time to go to the word and find out what God says about these things. What's he say about joy? I know what he says. He says, it's my strength. What does he say about disappointment? I know what he says. He says, he's my joy and he will work all things together. See, there are, there are avenues that can drive us back to the dominion of sin. To get back under the dominion of sin and darkness. And the results or the payment, the Bible says for that, is death. So we can invite death back into our lives. Our children can choose to invite death back into our lives. But if we don't get serious about washing ourselves, teaching our kids to wash themselves with the water of the word, that what is there can be revealed and dealt with, then how, how will we help them remain outside and over and having dominion with Christ Jesus over the dominion of darkness if we don't teach them to be in the word and led by the spirit. The spirit will lead us into all truth. What's truth? The word of God. So when we are walking by the spirit, when our mind, the Bible says, when your mind is set on spiritual things, not on, on, on the spirit of death, you, you have good things. Set your mind on things above, not on things of this earth. See, the dominion that is on this earth is the dominion of sin, death, and darkness. The dominion that we've been translated into and we no longer are under the dominion of Pharaoh, to make our example real, or how you can explain it to your kids, we're under the dominion of God. We're not under the dominion of the devil. We have dominion over him. Even though we're still in this cursed earth where the devil does have dominion, especially under soul, under soul, over souls that have not chosen the seed of Christ to come in and make them new, they still exist. He still exists. He still has dominion over them. But though we are here, he does not have dominion over us. So we can use the word to expose feelings, to expose emotions and what they really should look like under the dominion of life. That life would continue to pour into us and out of us and we wouldn't choose to continue in the dominion of darkness of which we've been delivered out of. The dominion of sin which we've been delivered out of. Isn't that powerful? We can make it so clear for our kids. We live under the dominion of life, of love, of light, and our life reflects it. And if anything out of the desire of the flesh, if any emotion stirs up that doesn't look like it comes out of that dominion, we're going to take it to the word and we're going to put it under the dominion of Christ so that we are not led astray and be tricked by the evil one back into a dominion that we've been delivered out of, back into a kingdom that we've been delivered out of. I'm sorry, I'm reading my notes. I'm not looking at you. I'm reading my notes. All right, that's your seven minute seed, mamas. Go get them. Call out those emotions. Again, if you haven't downloaded this free, you can get this for free on Root Bible Academy or at Root of Revival on Facebook or rootbible.com. You can get it there and download it in the discussion area. Listen, adults can do this, right? You're there's lots of adults that are led by their feelings and emotions, and the word doesn't say that. Go out and download that sheet. Do it with your spouse. Do it with your friends if you're in college. If you're in high school, do it. It looks silly, right? Maybe don't draw the faces, although I want to. I'm really into art right now. Um, maybe don't draw the faces, but start to find out what the Lord says about emotions and feelings and how we're not to be led by them. But what he tells us to do with them, that's the most powerful part is he doesn't just tell us what not to do. He gives us a way out. He doesn't just shine light on darkness. He leads us out of darkness. When we come under his dominion, when we reside there, when we dwell there, when we choose to put thoughts, actions, emotions under his author and dominionship, 
when we choose that, he gives us a way out and that gives no opportunity for the devil. We can teach our kids to do that and they can be mature spiritual beings now, today, as we grow them up in these things that a lot of adults don't even know. All right, mamas, go get them. Blessings. I will see you on the next seven minute scene.